I think a lot of people have um, obviously spoken to you about their personal experiences with um, how they changed their diet um, and how that's improved. And I can certainly um, echo those same stories with my own. Um, but I thought what I might do is talk more about um, exercise because I think that's the thing that um, really changed for me. And I guess with my story, um, I can tell you that too much exercise can potentially make you fatter and unhealthy because that's what happened to me. Um, so just to go back, I was someone who um, in my 20s was quite overweight. I was probably nearing about 100 kilos, I think, at one stage. And I decided, um, you know, I had to do something about it. So I did what, you know, the, the media and the health guidelines advised me to do. I um, started eating low fat and um, I started exercising. And what I discovered is I, I learned to run. And it started really slowly. Um, I, you know, was running to the end of the street and I would be puffed and then, you know, I kept it up and then what happened was I, I was living in Brunswick at the time, I got to run around the whole of Prince's Park and I thought I was amazing. And then I got to run around twice in Prince's Park without stopping and the weight just started coming off and I felt fantastic. Um, I was getting lots of compliments, you look great, and I thought, oh, this is easy. I can eat what I want and I can just keep running. It's fantastic. And for a few years, that, that actually worked really well for me. Um, I was ensuring that I had my um, low-fat muesli, my low-fat yoghurt, my low-fat snack bars, my low-fat protein bars, um, and I thought I was um, pretty cool, and I decided that I wanted to um, become a personal trainer, so I went and actually did my set for and became a personal trainer. And Michelle Bridges was my hero, cringe, think of that now. But, you know, and I used to watch Biggest Loser, and I was like, yeah, you just gotta sweat more, and you work hard, and eat less, and that's what you do. But, you know, other things were happening to me that I actually wasn't all piecing it together. Um, I, I did this for about six years, and over that time, I don't think I ever had a menstrual cycle. They just stopped. So things just stopped for me. My digestion was really bad. Um, and I thought that was just, you know, a genetic thing and it wasn't related. I was in denial of it. Um, even though I had tests and they said, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, I wasn't sleeping really well. I was stressed. I was kind of um, driven by the adrenaline. I was addicted to running, so I would probably run um, you'd probably six days a week in the morning for about an hour, so I was up about five in the morning. And um, if I didn't exercise every day, I, I felt like I was fat and, you know, I was out of control and I couldn't eat anything. Um, and this cycle continued on for about, yeah, six years. And then what happened was my body started rebelling and I started putting on weight and I didn't understand it. So even though I was running every day, I was doing weights, I was cross training, um, I was you know, continually cutting back on um, the fat and I was you know, eating whole grain and all those things, um, it, it sort of spiraled out of control. Um, around about this time I came across a blog by Sarah Wilson and um, the Sydney people are gonna be lucky enough to have Sarah Wilson speak at the, the conference um, I think it's next Saturday, so um, that would be fantastic. Um, but Sarah Wilson also um, went on a similar journey and started blogging about that and how she um, discovered that she had adrenal fatigue because of all the running that she did. Um, and after a bit of investigating and um, going to alternative practitioners, because my doctor wasn't really helping me, um, I found out that I also had adrenal fatigue and thyroid issues and that I was completely burnt out. And I just kept going though, I just, I just didn't really sink in for me. And then one morning, um, I, I got up to run and um, my muscles, everything in my body just ached and I was miserable and I was just felt compelled to get out and I ran down the street and I could hardly lift my legs and I just went, no, I can't do this anymore, I just can't. 
um, turned around and went home and then started investigating um, through Sarah Wilson's blog. I found Mark's Daily Apple. I think most of us sort of do that first and um, completely changed the way I ate and it was the process of unlearning um, and learning again. A lot of it was initially very challenging um, when you're told that you can actually you know, eat fat and um, you don't have to exercise every day and probably you know, for the first six months I found that incredibly difficult to actually do nothing. Um, and that was probably about 18 months ago and I'm still on a journey with um, adrenal fatigue and I have good days and bad days and I've you know, put a lot of measures in place to try and um, build um, my body up again. Um, I know if I do overdo it with stress that um, I do get unwell. Um, so that's just a continual thing. At the moment, I probably walk to work every day. I'm lucky I sort of live and work in the same area. So I probably walk for about 35 to 40 minutes a day. I lift weights a couple of times a week and I do lots of stretching and I do lots of meditation. So that's you know one of the biggest things because um, you know the adrenal fatigue and the thyroid it was all about um, you know the cortisol that was pumping through my body and I couldn't sleep at night. Um, and I would wake early and you know I didn't know how to relax my brain and it's so it's not just about the food the food's a big component but as other people have said it's also about um, you know being relaxed uh, being well rested as well um, so so that's what I did and then of course like many other people I got I really embraced um, the paleo lifestyle um, it, but also felt quite isolated because, um, you know, most of my friends didn't really know what I was talking about. They just thought I was just on this weird kind of diet. Um, and so I needed to seek out others like myself. Um, so I came across online the um, Paleo Meetup group. And at the time, I think there were probably about half a dozen members. And this was in. Yeah. Just press the mouse button once. Okay. Can I go back? Sorry, I'm a technophobe. We can just use the other mouse if you want. Okay. Cool. Is Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah. So at the time, um, there was a handful of people. I went to the um, the second meetup that was organised. I think Rod actually went to the first meetup, and there was four, four people. I think six. Six people. Um, and I went to the second meetup here, and that was in um, February, and there was four of us. And we didn't know each other, and it was kind of like a blind date, you're like, oh. <laughs> but um, the, the lovely woman, um, the Platts at the left, she actually works for me now, so I recruited her as well. Um, and Adrian on the right, I don't know if Adrian was here today, but um, Adrian's actually the person who founded the meetup group for Melbourne, um, so he started it all. Um, so we had a picnic um, at the Abbotsford uh, Farmers Market and it was the first time I actually was able to talk about coconut oil with people and fat and it was, you just like, you know, finding your family or something like that, it was just amazing. Um, and then we skip forward to um, September and we've got um, you know 30 people attending our meetup groups and that's a, a lovely occasion at Pallet. We had a, a couple of times at Pallet. And so, so what's the group for? Um, obviously, it's networking and, and socialisation. Um, as as I mentioned earlier, it can be incredibly isolating and hard to actually um, navigate your way through. Um, the social world when you're a paleo or low carb or you know you've got these restrictions um, people can be quite incredulous and they can be quite competitive about it and um, it's probably quite confronting for people and particularly you'd be surprised with sometimes your loved ones can react strongly and you do feel pressure sometimes so um, it's really important to feel supported and, and amongst people at times that get it it's, it's really important um, you know, we've got people at the, in the group who come from various backgrounds, levels of knowledge, um, so we're all, you know, contributing what we know. 
um, sharing ideas and resources, um, supporting each other, having fun as well, um, and food. It's all about the food at the end of the day, I think. So this was a, another occasion at, at Pallet. Um, this was a shared lunch that we had, um, and that's actually, I think that's uh, Sarah from Lady Home made some of her um, things that she made. So we were you know, able to showcase our own food as well. More food porn. That's Ivy's um, macadamia nut thread, by the way. Um, so, so if you're interested, you can go online and, and join up. I don't know if I'll have another meetup before the end of the year, as it is nearing fast. Um, but we will start it up again in the new year. Um, I've been rock this wasn't my finest moment. Um, so we do try and mix it up with the activities as well. Um, there are meetup groups in every state now. Um, Suze, who's here today from Sydney, uh, runs the, the Sydney uh, meetup and also is part of the Paleo Network um, online. Um, and I think today I just checked my phone, we just clicked over to 200 members for the Melbourne meetup group. So um, it's fantastic. We're not a cult. <laughs> um, so yeah, so please feel free to come and ask me questions or send me a message through the, the Meetup um, page online. So that's meetupmelbournepaleo.com. So thank you.